Looks like we're live. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreational programming session. So let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. Maybe. How about that? Uh, so, uh, a red a circle uh, live on a Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch.television website? Today we are implementing a file div tool in Python. So let's give the link to the Twitch channel where we're doing all of that. Uh, eh, Twitch.tv slash studying. And I'm gonna ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. There we go, the stream has been officially started. So, uh, today's session is basically a continuation of the previous stream where we were exploring um, the Levenstein algorithm, right? So the algorithm that computes the uh, distance between two strings, and by distance we mean the amount of actions that you need to perform on a string, uh, on the first string to get the second one, right? Or the source string to get the destination string, uh, right? And what's interesting is that uh, we explored that approach. It was rather interesting, and it was obvious that this approach actually works not only with sequence of characters, right? So it should also work with a sequence of lines, uh, right? So, and I decided to make another stream where I would explore that idea, uh, basically using this kind of approach that is used in Levenstein algorithm to implement uh, the div tool, right? So div uh, tool is actually famous Unix utility, right? So everyone who worked with Unix uh, very closely knows about it. Um, right. Uh, so the problem with the Levenstein algorithm specifically, right, if we're going to be using a specifically Levenstein algorithm, is that it's O n squared, not particularly n squared, uh, I would say it's more of an O n m, where n is the length of the first string and m is the length of the second string, right? If we assume that they're the same, uh, the same length, this is basically squared, right? So, and this could become uh, a problem if the files are very big, right? So, for instance, um, if the files are around, let's say, 100,000 lines of code, right, each, uh, you multiply them together, you get something like this, which is already kind of difficult even for modern, com like, um, you know, consumer computers to do, uh, and rather unnecessary, right? So people employed all sorts of tricks to speed this entire thing up. Uh, but what's important is that the approach is basically stays the same. No matter what kind of algorithm you use, the approach is still the same. And that approach is this editing graph that we ex um, basically discovered while trying to make Levenstein algorithm better, right? So you remember how we started? We started with just a recursive function. You can find this function on the internet. So if you Google up Levenstein distance, um, right? So it's a, you know, famous recursive function. <clears throat> so let's take a look. So here it is. Uh, we started with that. We basically analyzed and explored what the hell it is, right? We uh, basically learned that these four things are um, associated with different actions that you do, right? like adding, removing, substituting, and stuff like that. Then we found that you can represent the values of this function as a two-dimensional table. And then we noticed that this two-dimensional table is basically uh, sort of like forms a graph that when you move like in one, like horizontally, it's addition, it will down, it's removal. I don't remember for sure in which order, but it doesn't really matter. If you go diagonally, you either ignore the character or substitute it and stuff like that. So uh, the faster algorithm that um, then Levenstein, uh, then the Levenstein algorithm, they still use this approach. They just traverse this graph slightly differently, right? So it's more of a, like a details on how you traverse and find the shortest path in that specific graph. Uh, right, so I'm still going to be using uh, n squared algorithm uh, just to get things going, right? So I want to implement a simple utility that just does the diff of two files uh, slowly, right? So th that's the usual thing I do, right? I usually start with a slow algorithm, and then once I have something working, I can see like in what uh, in what direction I can improve this entire stuff. So that's going to be the idea for today's stream, right? So just like uh, take the things that we learned on the previous stream and try to apply them to uh in practice right so we'll see how it works i think it's going to be very very interesting hello everyone welcome 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 uh really glad to see you all today we already have a couple of subs let's take a look at them 
So what do we have? Uh, we have Marcion Neta. Thank you so much for six months of tier one subscription with the message. Have a great day, everyone. Yes, I do agree with that statement. And uh, Omar's 07007007 07, gifted one community uh, sub. Thank you so much for gifting to the community. That is very, very generous of you. <clears throat> Alrighty. So let's go ahead and create a new um, a new project, I suppose. First, maybe I'm going to actually give the link to the Levenstein algorithm, right? So I refer to this thing in here. So here it is. If anyone in the chat is interested, uh, I'm going to copy paste it in the chat. So also, um, we did a little bit of exploration on the previous stream. You know what? I I'm going to give the link to the previous stream, right? So uh, previous stream link because all of the links like even this wikipedia article is uh, available there right so to be done because i haven't uploaded the previous the previous stream to the youtube but by the time i upload this one it's probably going to be on youtube hopefully so and you can find the damage and distance in there as well right? and also the link to the source code where we did all the explorations uh, okay, so let's create a new thing. All right, so how are we going to call our Python diff utility and stuff like that? So Python diff, uh, let's call it pif. I don't know. <laughs> right. Is that a good name? Is that a good name for the for the Python Python project? I don't know. Let's call it pif.py. Uh, and let's do the usual thing. You think user bin environment, Python 3. And there we go. Uh, it's going to print. Hello world. There we go. There we go. We've got a hello world. Uh, right. So I'm gonna make this executable. Maybe I'm gonna actually do the license. Uh, right. So I'm gonna release all of that under MIT. Right. Under MIT, and I'm gonna put some sort of a readme in here. Uh, pif um, simple diff utility. Um, let's call it simple file diff um, utility or tool, let's call it tool because it's a little bit shorter. Simple file diff tool um, in Python. Um, in, uh, it's very slow because it uses all uh, n squared algorithm uh, and implement it for educational uh, purposes don't use it for anything uh, real right there we go so that, that's what we're gonna have it's, it's quite important to mention right so because usually people come to my projects and they have extremely high expectations for whatever reason uh right and you, you have to set the expectation a little bit low otherwise people on the internet get angry that you didn't give them awesome shit for free how fucking dare you i want my money back that they didn't give you <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, right. Uh, so yeah, people get very angry if they're not satisfied with the shit you give them for free on the internet. It's just insane, uh, right? So you have to be very careful with that. You know what I mean? Anyway, so how do you write the uh, <clears throat> the Python applications? Right. So usually you do something like uh, name uh, equal main. Right. So something like this and this is your entry point right if i remember correctly so it's essentially this is a uh, this is this code is not going to be executed if you import this module right it's only going to be executed if you uh run it as an application right so that's basically what it means uh okay so i suppose the way it's going to work right so the way it's going to work mm, quick start console hola so essentially, you will do something like uh, pif pi, pif pi, and uh, for example, file one uh, and file two, and it will print to the uh, standard output the the div between the files, right? So that's going to be the idea. It's not going to have anything super fancy. It's going to be just that. Uh, so there are different formats for divs, um, right? So as far as I know, like div utility itself uh, supports several of them. So the main one that is that everyone uses is the universal format or unified context or something like that. Uh, right. I'm not sure if we're gonna use any sort of like a standard for, for the patches, right? So we're gonna just whatever, we, we're just gonna use uh, whatever format that we see fit. And maybe if we'll have 
um, if I'll have a motivation, maybe I'm gonna make it compliant with like a unified format or something like that. We'll see. So this is not the focus. To be like compliant with any standard is definitely not the focus of today's stream. That's for sure. I don't really want to do anything uh, related to that. Um, okay. So what we need? Uh, we probably need to read the command line arguments, right? So that can be very, very useful. So as a, if I remember correctly, it's located somewhere in OS, uh, right? Args, argv, uh, right? Is that what it is? Args? Or maybe it's located in sys, sys args, um, mm, argv. Yeah, there we go. So it's argv. Okay, that's cool. Can, can I read something about that? Is there anything useful about this thing? If no arguments are given, the constructor creates an empty list. Uh, so the thing about uh, arguments is that they usually contain the first argument as the command itself, right? So if we do something like uh, sys arg, sys args, or was it arg? I keep, I keep forgetting. Uh, a boom. So it does contain the first thing as the uh, as the file path, which is actually not bad, I think, right? Uh, which is actually not bad because we then can do the following thing. We can say program uh, sysargv uh, zero, and then we can use that program when we print uh, some sort of like a usage help thingy. We can say uh, usage, uh, then we can say this is a f string program file one, file two. So that's what we can say in here. And if I run something like this, as you can see, uh, it is like that. And if in the future, for whatever reason, I rename this thing to something uh, FIP. Um, okay, I'm sorry, FIP, right. So for some reason, I accidentally saved my compilation uh, thingy. I didn't really want to do that. Uh, right, so then I do FIP. Uh, as you can see, it automatically changed that as well. So yeah. It's kind of convenient, I think, right? I, I do that all the time in all of the programs, by the way, uh, right? Mm -mm -mm. I think we've got another sub. Mm, so we have Dobry Raniko. Thank you so much for tier one subscription. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, my fellow brother Slav. Uh, all right, so let's continue. So what's going to be the next thing? So the next is probably going to be Checking if we have enough arguments, right? So if len uh, sys uh, argv is, so we, we expect at least three, right? So if it actually less than three, then in that case, we want to do something like this, uh, right? And then we want to say something like uh, error, uh, no files to compare, not, well, let's put it this way, because you may provide one, but not two, uh, not, enough, uh, not enough files to compare, the provided right so something like that not enough files to compare we provide it and then we're going to exit with non-zero exit code right so once we got that uh, we can do the following thing so this is going to be file path one uh sys argv one zoo and then we're going to have the second file uh so let's put it like this right so file one is going to be that file path one and file two is this mm -hmm. okay so uh, let's continue so I already renamed this into I think uh, Let's a go. Okay, so then I can say something like uh, hello world, and we've got uh, these two files. Okay, so we've got our basically the skeleton of the application, right? So the thing we need to do, we need to read the uh, the whole file now, right? So I think I'm gonna go the following way. Uh, I'm gonna like read both of them into the memory and then uh, process them within the memory, right? So. Um, if you don't have enough memory to hold these two files, uh, just buy more RAM, you know, you, you know the drill, right? You know the drill. Uh, so let's create a function, something like uh, read entire file, right? So we can accept the file path. And if I remember correctly, the way you read entire file, uh, right? So you just open it, 
uh, right. And when you open it, it gives you the file descriptor, right? So it's going to be file path, and we're reading it for we open it for reading. So it already actually uses the mod R. Uh, we don't really have to provide anything, and it doesn't have a buffering enabled. How weird! But maybe that's fine if we're reading the entire file. You know what I mean? Uh, right. So yeah, maybe maybe that's fine. So here we're going to have a file. So file is already taken for whatever reason. So it's called F. Right, if I open some sort of a file like readme md uh, and then I took inside of it, I think um, this thing has a method read, right? So this thing has a method read and by calling read, I can read the entire thing. All right, so uh, let's do it like this. So it's going to be read. And as far as I know, I can just do something like this with open, with open as f, right? So then I can read the entire thing. And then we can just simply return this stuff. Okay. Uh, is that it actually? Is it worth creating a separate function for that? I'm actually worried. <laughs> like maybe it's not. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. So uh, print read entire file, file path one, file path two. Right. So, and let's actually try to read this entire thing. And as you can see, we don't have the files uh, that we're trying to, uh, to compare. Uh, so let's actually maybe create some sort of files, uh, right? So I don't really know what we're going to use as a, as a text uh, for this entire stuff. Will be some, something interesting. Should have thought about that. Uh, so maybe a lorem ipsum. How do you, how do you spell that? I don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's you. So there's generator, uh, all the facts. Uh, it's a dummy text, but where is the... There's something weird of this website, uh, is that you want to just get some lorem ipsum text and it never gives you, and it's just like I could never understand what the fuck is that. Um, right, can you just give me the text? Yeah, th that's what I want, like I literally don't give a shit about anything else, thank you so much. Alright. <laughs> Uh, so we can say, I don't know, file one txt, uh, right, we probably want to split this entire stuff by uh, by lines or something like that, all right, something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the first file, and maybe we're going to copy uh, file two, t uh, file one to file two. Uh, file to txt. Uh, there we go. So, and we're gonna probably maybe um, uh, swap a couple of words in this line. So, we can even verify, right, if we do diff of file 1 uh, and file 2, right, is it going to provide the thing? Yeah, there we go. So, it says that this, this line was modified, right, so this line was modified. So we get a sub from uh, Mac Binjo. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, already, already, already. <clears throat> All right. So, and the next thing we want to do, we want to split by lines. I don't remember how you split by lines in Python. So let's actually Google the Python split string by lines. Uh, so split lines, so there is literally a method. I'm gonna open this website, uh, so let me see. Hello, split, uh, maybe, you know what, I'm gonna do help. And there's no help, but is there a deer? Yeah, there is a deer. Uh, there is a split, but I can't see, okay, so this is a split lines. Uh, right, so in this thing, I'm gonna do split lines like so. Actually, I wanna do help on split lines. Uh, all right, that's actually perfect. Let's do split lines. Uh, split lines. There we go. So I'm gonna run this entire thing on file one txt and file two txt. There we go. So we've got the lines. Right, we've got different lines, which is perfect. Mm, which is absolutely perfecto. Um, okay, go. So maybe what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this entire stuff somewhere here. Um, 
I'm thinking, like, I'm gonna read it only once, and I'm never gonna go back to that. So my, maybe I can read the entire file, uh, split lines, and then sh just say lines one. And then here I can do a similar thing, and, but query replace one with two. There we go. So we've got the data, right? So now we have to just run the Levenstein algorithm on these two se uh, sequence of lines and just like find the editing script between them, right? Editing script for them, rather. Uh, right, so let's go ahead and maybe create a function Levenstein, but I'm not sure actually. Uh, let's actually try to do that in here, right? Let's try to do that in here. So the thing we uh, we do with the Levenstein algorithm, right? We basically create the cache. Maybe I'm gonna actually open uh, the code that we created on the previous stream. You can actually find this code on in the gist. I put it in the gist just for everyone, if anyone is interested. Uh, right. So I'm gonna give it to the chat, and I'm also gonna put that in the description, right? So for people who accidentally absolutely accidentally watch that on uh, on youtube right <clears throat> so i'm gonna put it in here so the first thing we need to do we need to create all the necessary tables right so because we we, we use tables for all of that so the first one is a cache that stores the distances right so maybe i'm gonna actually instead of calling the cache i'm gonna call them distances right so dists uh distances Right, so okay. I'm a little bit worried that it's a very long name, but maybe maybe that's fine. Right, so this is basically uh, the amount of such actions that we need to perform to turn one, st uh, one uh, sequence of lines into another sequence of lines. And we also keep track of the actions that you have to perform in here, right? So the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna iterate uh, through uh, the... Um, through all of the lines in here so this is lines one uh, but actually we have to do plus one right so because we are uh, we're the, the table the indices of the table don't really store the index of the character they kind of store the length of the string we're talking about right so uh, let me let me actually maybe draw that <clears throat> So imagine that we have uh, two strings, right? So uh, I'm gonna use uh, like strings and lines interchangeably, right? So it's easier, uh, it's easier to uh, reason about characters rather than uh, reason about lines, right? So we're gonna have a source add and uh, the destination daddy, right? <laughs> right. So it's actually kind of useful because to turn add into daddy, you have to add two characters in here, D and Y. Right, so, and the table that we build in here, right, so it has uh, essentially things associated like that. So A, D, D, right, and then D, A, oh, so maybe I'm going to put this like this, uh, D, D, Y. Uh, right, so, and we have the cells that actually represent the um, amount of uh, actions that you have to perform to turn one string into another one, right? So, and the index within the stable actually represents the length of the string, right? When I take a look at this specific cell, so what that means, that means I'm uh, considering uh, this substring of the destination string and this substring of the source string right so and essentially this cell is supposed to answer um, how many actions i have to perform on this substring to get this substring right uh, essentially like that and uh, for instance it depends on the table right so because we have at least uh, two tables so there's destination table that uh, gets us the amount of actions and also we have a um, you know an action table that tells us what kind of action we have to perform uh, on this specific character to basically turn this string into this one. We can add character, re remove character, and so on and so forth. Right, so since this thing kind of represents the length, right, uh, of the substrings, we need an extra, uh, an extra row and column to represent zero, 
Right. When we go, we're talking about when we're talking about this cell, we're talking about the length of the strings of length one. But we also need to talk about the strings with the length zero. So because of that, there is an extra column in here, and there is an extra row in here. Right. Uh, in fact, it is easier to represent this sort of table like so, where we have zero somewhere here. Uh, right. And we have characters on sort of like the edges in here. So this is like absolute zero. And here we start to have D, uh, A, uh, D, D, Y, right? So this is not really O, right? So this is not really O, let me remove it. Uh, what I mean here, it's like more of a zero here, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, so this is A. Uh, D, D. And essentially, this kind of forms a graph, uh, like so. So it's, it's better to actually turn it into something like this. Right. So let me draw these lines. Mm -hmm. So, and the cells in the table, uh, they actually represent this specific node in this specific graph, right? So, and uh, for instance, when I talk about this thing, I talk about how to turn this thing into this thing. But when I talk about this thing, I'm talking about how to turn empty string into empty string, right? So, uh, so when I talk, uh, talk about uh, this node, so I have uh, A and I have D. So what kind of actions can I perform to um, essentially turn A into D? I can only perform, perform the substitution, right? So for instance, you, you can assume that there is like a path from here to here, which means you substitute A into D, uh, right? So when there are situations when, for instance, um, I don't know, somewhere here, uh, the characters are the same, in this case, I can ignore it. That means there is a path in here. And essentially, uh, coming up with the div is traversing this specific graph, right? Does it make sense? I hope, I hope that makes sense. So I'm, I'm kind of actually explaining why we need like an extra row and column in here, right? Because rows and columns, they do not uh, represent the specific character within the strings. They represent the length of the substrings that we're talking about, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, what's interesting is that usually, like with the diff utilities, they don't have an action to substitute the character, right? So uh, if you've seen the divs, they usually talk about removing um, rows and adding rows, which kind of makes sense. If you think about it, if you have the action to add and remove, substitution is kind of redundant because you can express any substitution as um, removing and then adding which is actually kind of cool, which means that you have less actions to work with, right? You have less actions to work with. And uh, diagonal movement always represents ignoring the character, right? Because uh, when you have substitution, a diagonal movement on, on this graph can mean either ignoring and, or substitution. And that means you need to like, deep, like handle additional cases in here. But if you don't have substitution, you just like replace it with add remove. A diagonal is always like uh, ignoring. <clears throat> right. So that's basically what it all means hopefully hopefully that makes sense uh, right that's why I have to do plus one just to like accommodate that information mm -mm -mm. Mm. it's kind of interesting uh, this is already the second stream people talking about bioinformatics uh, in the chat are these algorithms also used in bioinformatics Right, because I, I know nothing about that. I know nothing about bi uh, bioinformatics. I'm just like a stupid Java developer, right? I'm, I know how to do SQL queries to the Postgres database. Uh, that's the only thing I know, right? So, and very simple one, uh, right? So, uh, and ChatGPT replaced me because now anyone can just write the ChatGPT, how do I query that? And they give you uh, SQL. So that, that's why, by the way, I'm, I stream because ChatGPT stole my job. Right, so so people use this kind of algorithms in uh, bioinformatics as well, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, cool. Um, yes, yes, yes. It actually makes sense, right? So, for instance, you you have sequences of DNAs, right? 
we have sequences of DNAs and DNAs they constantly mutate right so that means some things uh, get like changed replaced and stuff like that and maybe you need an algorithm to sort of trace the mutations like over time um that actually makes sense that's actually pretty cool yeah hmm that's that's very cool this is way more interesting than uh, the job chat gpt stole from me but anyway um should have become biologist you know what i mean um okay mm, so let's actually populate the caches um all right so we're gonna have distances we're gonna append some stuff in here and what do we have in here i'm not sure so i'm gonna just populate it with zeros right so let's let's put zeros in here uh, and uh, this is basically the rows. So this is the length of lines two plus one. Right? So this is the distances, and uh, we're also going to have actions. Right? So what I'm thinking is that it would be kind of nice to maybe save those lengths, right? Maybe it would be nice to save those lengths. And it, the most logical thing. Um, to save them in is probably n1 and n2 but i already use n1 and n2 as indices for the length of the substrings so it's not particularly uh convenient to do it like that so maybe i'm going to call them m right so it's sort of like a full length of those things right so this is going to be length of alliance one right and this is going to be uh replacement to two right and because of that i should be able to just do something like m1 and both of these things are uh, m2 and we're just populating this entire stuff mm, mm, mm. Uh, okay gun mm, 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 mm. uh, so the way we actually solve this problem we solve it by iterating from left to right uh top to bottom and just on each step we figure out what's the most optimal action to do and then we reach uh this corner and this corner should contain the answer is uh, that is how many actions we have to perform and then from this corner we sort of trace back the sequence of actions that you have to perform uh, aka patch you know what's interesting is that why do we have to go um, like that like why do we have to iterate this entire thing like that we can for instance BFS this entire thing hmm you know what I mean and if we're going to start using BFSs, we can start like using different heuristics like A star to actually reach this corner faster. Yeah. So because if you use like a square algorithm, you must visit each individual node. But what if we say we don't need each individual node if we can reach the target fast, uh, faster than that? right if we just like try to streamline there just like straight at streamline we can actually make it faster can't we right so like bfs with a little bit of heuristic and maybe it's going to be fast and you know what's interesting in practice in practice you have big files like very long files with few changes in them which means that the majority of the path is going to be ignore, 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 and then you will uh, encounter a hunk. Do, do you guys know what is a hunk? Right? Do, do, do you guys know what is a hunk? Uh, so let me let me actually show you what is a hunk. Uh, essentially, if I just do a div, right? So a hunk, it's basically like a small uh, region with actions. Uh, and a little bit of a context and patch is a sequence of hunks right so you see that a patch usually consists uh, of a sequence of these uh, sort of like regions of these sort of things and these things have name the official terminology for this thing is hunk h-u-n-k right so we can even google it up diff hunk mm -mm -mm. the context of git uh, what is a hunk right so maybe in Stack Overflow, there is a good answer for that. Uh, when compared to files, uh, diff finds sequences of lines common in both files in uh, interspersed with groups of different lines called uh, hunks. Right. 
So uh, this is basically what I mean. So in practice, you have like a ignore, 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 ignore hunk, which is rather small, usually depends on what you've done. Then ignore, 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 hunk, right? So something like this. Um, <clears throat> Funny name for group of lines. It's not really a group of lines. It's a um, group of different lines, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I ran out of tea already, unfortunately. Right. So what we're gonna start with, right? So we're gonna start with the um, with the usual thing where we just like iterate through all of that. So let's populate uh, this stuff, right? So for n two in range. Um, yeah, so the initial distances in here, right? The initial distances at zero, zero is going to be zero. We don't uh, do any actions. And the actions that we do in here is going to be simply ignore. There is nothing to do in here. Though, here's an interesting thing. Uh, we probably don't want to have substitute. Yeah. So this entire thing is probably going to be simpler because we probably do not gonna not going to have any substitution. Mm, we're not going to do any substitution. Right. Um, okay. Eh, for some reason, this thing doesn't really work properly. Uh, so, action ignore for n2. So, n2 is the column, so I'm iterating through all of the columns in a range from 1 to uh, m2 plus 1. Right. So, m. Uh, m the class of variables m is the full length, right? It is a full length. n is the sub, uh, sub, uh, sub lengths, sub lengths, so to speak. Uh, so this is the distances. It's going to be n1, n2, um, and we're just populating them with uh, increasing things. And the action that we do in this particular case means that we're just adding this thing, right? As we go to the right, uh, we're adding this entire stuff. Okay, that's cool. So I'm also slowly doing the recap uh, of this entire stuff as well by going through this code, which is which is nice, right? Um, and m1 plus 1, right? So n2 is 0, distances n1, n2, and, uh -huh, and 1, and the actions that we're performing here, right? If we're going down, we're effectively removing those characters, right? So because the destination is, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay, uh, now, um, what I'm thinking, can I also have, I want to have a trace cache, you know what I mean? Um, I want to have a trace cache here, I think it, it would be kind of useful. So I'm going to copy paste this entire stuff and I'm going to just put it in here. Uh -huh. ah, I was hoping that if I just select and then press tab, it's going to auto format it. Uh, right, but it didn't do that, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So what I want to do now, I want to just trace the cache, uh, right? So th though I don't really call it cache anymore, right? So maybe I'm, I should call it something different, uh, right? So not trace cache, but trace uh, maybe in tables. Oh, I don't know. Just a second. Tables. tables, distances and actions. So let's take a look what we've got. Uh, this is not what I want. I want it to be pif dot uh, pi. And we're not going to have this entire thing. Okay. So we populated everything in here, right? So um, yeah, original action is zero in here, which is probably fine. Uh, let me let me quickly change that. Um, where is that? So this is going to be like so. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So we got that. Um, so it's kind of convenient that the file has the same length. You know what would be even cooler if we had, ah, uh, I, I was about to say, if we had also like a, 
um, you know, legend, right, that says the, like, the characters in here, right? So what's each column associated with which character and which row, but we don't have characters anymore. Uh, we have we have lines, right? So <laughs> it's not really, like, easy to put lines in there, unfortunately. <clears throat> okay, go. it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Is it not? I think it is. The missile knows where it is because it knows where it isn't. Um, okay. So the next thing we need to do, we need to do the actual, uh, you know, think nested loop. Uh, N1 in range from 1M1 plus 1, uh, right? And a similar, uh, similarly, uh, we have to do the other thing, right? Something like this. And here is an interesting part, right? So here we have substitution but we don't have it in our file utility. But we still have ignore, right? We still have ignore, so we probably want to uh, have it here as well. All right, so if the, if the lines one, lines two are equal, right? If the lines two are equal, we say that the distance is the same as the one, if we take it by a diagonal, right? Uh, and then we continue this entire stuff. Okay. So then we do remove, add, and substitution. We don't really care about substitution. I'm gonna only copy paste, uh, copy paste, remove. Right. Uh, yes, I'm copy pasting code, but I'm copy pasting my own code that I wrote myself. I think I'm allowed to do that. I mean, these days, like everyone copy paste, uh, like uh, writes code by copy pasting. Um, all right, all right, all right. Mm -mm -mm. So, then we basically assume that we picked uh, remove, right? So we essentially assume that we picked remove. I'm gonna say that the distance is the distance from remove and action is the remove action. So after that, we compare whatever we got to add and if the add is smaller we want to pick the add and we're going to replace it in here so substitution is not needed and after that we want to add um, plus one uh, but we again need to replace the cache with the distance there we go. so and that should be it that should build the entire uh, the entire table that is necessary to restore uh, the the actions and stuff like that. So we have distant. Oh, it's distance. So I probably want to something like query replace distant uh, distance uh, distance distances. I think that's that's how it, it goes. Uh, okay, right. And look at that. <clears throat> uh, that's very funny. So on each, you, you can clearly see. So we started here. And then we have ignore, 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 ignore. Uh, and then, um, so we do ignore and we do remove, right? And removing is actually going down or maybe, hmm, is it going down? Huh. This one is sus. Remove or add, so it only, Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm, so because when I remove I'm going actually down. Well I'm I'm reconstructing it incorrectly, I'm an idiot, okay. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like I have to go from... Yeah, I have to uh, do that uh, in a different way. Um, right. Yeah. So if I remove, I go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we do ignore. So let me say go here, then ignore, go here, then ignore, go here. And then I go uh, R, that means I go up. Uh, and then I do add, which means I go left. And then I continue going by diagonal until I reach here. Okay, so I'm sorry, I just had a brain fart. So, but this is exactly what I was talking about, right? So we have uh, like a very 
like no, uh, majority of the lines being the same and because of that uh, it's just ignore 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 and then uh, remove and add and then ignore 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 again uh, right so I think that actually represents really well like the usual use case in here uh, the usual use case and like computing all of this adds uh, uh, up here and computing all of these R's down there, it's kind of like a waste of time for uh, for the usual use case again. Uh, right, for the usual use case. Um, I wonder what's going to happen uh, if we try to compare f this file with itself, right? So, for instance, if I copy-paste uh, this file pif to pif2, right? So, something like this. Uh, I didn't want to put poo in here. Uh, right, so and let's actually maybe put something like hello in here. Right, so we edit two lines. And if we uh, do pif pi, we compare in the file with itself, right? So, but a modified version of itself. pif to uh, pi. And it wasn't that slow, if you know what I mean. It wasn't that slow. <laughs> this actually looks kind of funny. Uh, right, but it's kind of difficult to see. Uh, what's going on in here, right? So, yeah. So you can clearly see, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but the smallest number are somewhere here in the center, right? There's somewhere here in the center. And the majority of just like ignore, 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 ignore. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I think I got uh, another sub. Uh, thank you so much, Iptox, uh, for uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With an emote which my browser is incapable of seeing, so I don't know what it is. Uh, so just a second. I, yeah, it's it's actually a wave, right? It's it's a wave. Hello, hello. Right, so Chat Arena can actually recognize this emote, but, uh, you know, browser cannot. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <sighs> okay, go. so I'm a little bit worried that I'm almost done implementing this tool. <laughs> I was hoping that it's going to take like a whole stream, but for some reason it feels like... Because, okay, I just need to recover the script. Um, yeah, because here it is. I just need to recover the script and then I need to format everything accordingly, right? So let's go ahead and try to do that, I suppose. Um, so let me let me see. So in the, if we go into the... Uh, Levenstein here, right? So this is a trace, but in our case, this is not really a trace. This is more of a patch, if you know what I mean. We are generating a patch. And you know what's even cooler? Right, so the final patch in here can, uh, also contains ignores. We can ignore the ignores and l literally get the patch, which is kind of cool, I think. We can literally get the patch. Uh, all right, so let me let me see. So while uh, we're gonna have n1 equal initially to the m1 uh, and n2 equal to m2, maybe I can just straight up use m1 and m2 already because after this entire recovery of the patch, we don't really need them anymore. Uh, but anyway, so while n1 is equal to zero, uh, greater than zero, or n2 is greater than zero, right? So that means they both should become. Uh, equal to zero for this thing to stop, which is fine because no matter how you backtrace this gr uh, this graph, uh, you always gonna end up at zero zero. So it's computed the way it's computed that way, right? So let's grab the action, right? So this is the actions and one and then two, right? And if we have an action equal to add, uh, we need to. First of all, subtract this entire thing and add to the patch, uh, append, uh, so essentially add. Then we're saying what line do we have to add. And this is the interesting part. So I think I want to um, put an index in there, right? So I'm going to literally put an index and the line itself. So it's going to be more like lines, um, lines 2 and 2, right? Something like this. L if action remove uh, remove. 
uh, n1 minus 1. And I do that so then after that I can uh, form, uh, I can format the patch properly, if you know what I mean. Um, right, so then we're gonna do something like patch append, uh, remove lines actually n1 lines 1 and 1 uh, and else. Um, in case of ignore, right, so the last one that we need to handle in here is the ignore action. Um, I think I'm not gonna add it to the patch. I'm gonna literally ignore it, right? So I'm gonna subtract these two things and I'm gonna let it be. And otherwise we wanna say that this is unreachable, right? So just in case we accidentally put something else in here, I want this thing to crash uh, miserably. Right, so, and after that, so we need to reverse this entire patch. So I think I'm gonna do it like this. Is it possible to uh, have mutable reverse, right? Is there something like just a reverse in Python, um, right? Or maybe like this method uh, to reverse in place. Okay, so that's precisely what I wanted. Actually, believe it or not. Right. So reversed is more like a, more of a, functional thing right so with immutable operations and stuff like that but i want in place thing uh that's what i want um okay so and after that maybe it makes sense to print this patch and see what exactly has happened in there or maybe i want to actually uh you know print everything by line right <clears throat> so let's put p in patch uh right and then i'm gonna just do print p all right that should be it uh, I almost had an urge to recompile the code, but I'm programming in a superior dynamically typed language that doesn't require any pesky recompilation, and it doesn't break my flow, right, with those stupid compilation errors. <laughs> That's what the proponents of, uh, you know, dynamic languages say, right, so this, the, the compiler puts unnecessary uh, friction, right, it's just, it's just like borrow checker, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, okay, so file one, txt, then file two, txt, and what do we get? Uh, all right, so what you need to do, you need to add at a line four uh, this thing, and you need to remove this thing. So if I take a look at the file uh, one, right, and I go to, um, and I, I go find uh, this thing, right, so here is the line, and I need to, remove it, right, as the patch says, and replace it with this line, which is present in this, in the file 2. And there you go. That works. That's actually so fucking awesome. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, and is it actually like a f uh, 4? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4? I, I think, yeah, I think it is. I just implemented a patch utility. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, so maybe we want to actually format it in a certain way, all right? So essentially how the diff utility does that. Uh, so let's see, uh, diff. And I want to you, you see the universal one. Yeah, there we go. Eh. Mm -hmm. So let me think. It's kind of cool that you always have this sort of like a context, right? You know what I mean? Uh, some sort of a context. So maybe the first thing we want to do, we want to uh, print this stuff, right? So we want to print this stuff. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to print uh, the file path of the first one, right? So it, first of all, it's dash, 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 right? So it's a dash, 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 then the file path of the first one. And then some sort of a date, right? So I suppose the date of the last modification and then the permissions. Uh, do I want to do that right now? Maybe maybe not, right? So maybe not uh, not now, not, yeah, not now. Uh, and this one is actually plus, plus, plus. Uh -huh. um, okay, so maybe I, I'm going to do to do print uh, date of modification and permissions, right? And permissions. So. What is that? What the fuck is this? <laughs> I actually never noticed. What's that supposed to mean? Does anybody know? Um, oh, it's it's. Is it time zone? Yeah, permissions looking like time zone. Maybe maybe it is time zone. So maybe it's not the permissions. Uh, but I mean, it that does look like permissions, doesn't it? I mean, you can't argue with that. 
Uh, right, so... Okay, well, we're gonna ignore this shit. I don't know what that is. Um, so, start and end line. Uh, eh? I suppose this is the line two. Uh, I don't know what that is. Okay, so we're gonna ignore that. Alright. Uh, so... Though, it's kind of... Interesting. So we have... Ooh, actually forming this specific patch into like a universal format is a problem on itself. Huh. That's very interesting, actually. I never thought about it. <laughs> Looks like Python version to me, <laughs> yeah. Oh, y U mask, yeah, it, it does look like a U mask if you, if you take a look at it. Uh, yeah. I, like, I don't know, my, my brain kind of skipped plus in this particular case. <sighs> you know what? Uh, I think this is because I ran out of tea. So that's that's why I cannot think about how to implement this thing. So maybe we should make a small break. I'm gonna try to refill my cup of tea. Right? I'm gonna try to refill a cup of tea. And we're gonna continue doing all that. Um, all right, so you know, while I was making tea, what I thought? I thought, oh, fuck it, I'm not gonna do that. So we're gonna have a custom format, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't wanna really fiddle with like the uniform uniform format or anything like that let's just create our own one and the our own one is going to be basically the the patch right so uh, let's just do basically the patch uh, so just a second uh, pif, there we go uh, so we essentially go into uh, have the following format so let me let me uh, implement that super quick right in patch and uh, here maybe I'm gonna do the following thing. So we have an action, then the number, and then the line, right? So we have these three things. So what I'm thinking is that like, let's literally print them, right? Let's literally print an action and a an line separated by single spaces, right? And let's call it a diff, right? This is our custom diff format, as already said at the beginning of the stream, uh, maybe we're going to use the custom div format. And this looks like a custom div format, right? So I think it's pretty usable custom div format. Uh, maybe we can even have more things in here. So let's actually go to the second, uh, second file and maybe add uh, something else in here. Um, uh, additional stuff, I don't know. I was trying to be funny, but yeah, as you can see here, we add another thing. And then we can say, okay, let's remove uh, this line as well. Uh, and that works as well, as you can see. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, that's actually pretty epic, I would even say. So, and the reason why I want to have some sort of a, like far format already, because I want to implement um, now applying the patch. You know what I mean? Right, so I wanna implement the reverse separation where I can take the file that contains this thing and then applies them to uh, existing file, right, to, to patch it. I think that would be actually kind of interesting, right? So you can uh, find the diff, you can generate a patch, and now then you can take that patch and apply it to existing file, right? And thus the, the utility will be complete, right? So I want you to like complete this cycle. I think this, this is going to be cool, right? Uh, and once you have this utility, you can even continue building something, right? You can build your own um, version control system, right? Which like diffs the whole folders, right? And then it stores commits as the diffs between re like uh, revisions of the folder state, uh, right? And then you would be able to like, you know, check out specific versions, right? And maybe even branch and stuff like that. It will be actually kind of interesting, right? But we're not going to implement that, it's just like a random ideas maybe for, for somebody, uh, for like a pet project to explore things, because yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so that's, that's very epic, I believe. Right. Uh, so, uh, I think the time has come, by the way, to make a committee committee and maybe even a pushy pushy, what do you guys think? Yes, yes, the time has come. Uh, so... Um, I don't know, it would be nice to have some interesting, like, um, 
example, so to speak, right? Something more interesting than this, but I, I cannot come up with anything. I'm not a creative enough for this kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, let's, let's uh, actually quickly do git init. So let's initialize this entire stuff and I'm gonna commit literally everything, right? Uh, so I'm gonna say ready, a set, a go, and let's uh, go to the GitHub. Okay. Mm, the time has come. The time is fucking coming. So this is spiff. Uh, and do we have a simple file diff tool uh, in Python? All right, I'm gonna say that it is in fact public. Uh -huh. It is in fact public and I'm gonna just, eh, I'm gonna just, eh, uh, add origin and I'm gonna just like do it like this. There we go. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Uh, right into the repo and you can find the source code of this thing uh, in here give it a star give it a like subscribe uh, you know the usual stuff the usual stuff okay and of course for uh, respectable people who watch on YouTube we're gonna give them the, the source code in the description so here is the source code uh, there we go turn notification on exactly exactly like subscribe turn notification on all the jazz uh all right so the next step is going to be uh the next step is going to be uh implementing the sub commands right so i want to have these sub commands where i could say okay um so something like this diff right so you provide the diff sub command and it computes the diff between these files uh which you can then maybe save to file patch right and the next thing you want to do is pif pi patch uh, then you provide um, let's actually do it like this so i already committed file one and file two so there's no need to be vague in here we can be as specific as possible just do that uh, right and then we're going to say patch file one with file patch and that will turn uh, file one into file two and you can verify that by doing something like diffu uh, file one txt file two txt there we go right so you can kind of verify um so when we can even put something like this in here very uh fi that uh file one was actually turned into file two txt like so that's basically what we have in here so that's the plan it's not implemented yet but that's going to be the plan uh, right, so to do that, we'll need subcommands in here. Right. We'll need subcommands. So the usage now is um, a little bit different, right? So it's a little bit different. So for instance, now we need to check if the length of sys argv is less than two, right? If it is less than two, we want to say something like, uh, like so program, uh, sub command actually it's mandatory uh, sub command and then we have uh, options of the sub command right, so something like this and then we can say uh, sub commands right, what kind of sub commands we're going to have uh, one two three four and this one is a diff uh, file one file two so uh, print the difference, difference between the files to std out. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Um, patch file file patch mm -hmm. patch the file with the given patch. English is hard, I'm sorry. Right. So that's what we have in here. Right. So maybe we should introduce the help subcommand at some point, who knows? Um, I like my GitHub notifications off. Well, I wish I could turn them off. I mean, I, I can, but you have to do that per repo, I suppose. I don't know. Um, I don't really know, I don't really know. 
Oh, by the way, we got some 100 bits from Bob's Wear. I don't know if I acknowledge that, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for 100 bits. Uh, I really appreciate it. Maybe one day I'll get them and I definitely will buy some, um, some tea on, on those bits. So thank you so much. Um, it would be kind of cool if I had a way to sort of like pop the arguments out. Um, if you know what I mean. Right, so essentially, if I have some arguments in here, right, so this is gonna be something like full uh, bar buzz. Um, is there any way I can, I think I already did that before in the past, but I forgot how I did that. Essentially, I wanna split this into uh, one argument and the rest of the arguments, like so, right. Um, but I don't remember. So I want to do something like Python um, destruct um, destructurize a head and tail. Right. Uh, head and tail. Well, it's not Python. Head and tail in one line Python. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yes, that's what I want. That's what I actually want. So it's more of a like this. Right, so then I have arg and the rest of them and I can continue doing this kind of stuff. So that's relatively uh, convenient. Right. So, but here's an interesting thing. So the program should always be present. So we're gonna assert that the length of the sys arg v is greater than zero. Right, so it always has to be greater than zero. And here we're gonna do uh, maybe args uh, arg v, like so. So, and um, starting from here, we're going to be only working with args. So, if uh, args is empty at this point, we don't have a subcommand. But then we can say something like, okay, subcommand args args. See? Right. And then uh, we can continue parsing as usual. So this is a rather convenient way of doing that, in my opinion. Right. So we took, uh, took the program, right, and we check if there is zero. Then we sort of we sort of like a pop out from the from the left side or something. Okay. So if arg uh, if subcommand is equal to diff, uh, we are doing like everything we were doing in here. Right. So this is the diff subcommand now. Um, right. But this is slightly. Um, delete training white spaces. Thank you so much. Uh, we need to get the file paths, right? We need to get the file paths. So let's quickly do that. If <clears throat> len args is less than two, we have to print the the usual error. Uh, that syntax is very cool. Yeah, it's actually kind of useful, right? So I'm pretty sure there is a way to pop the think from the end, right, in the list. Maybe there's something like, maybe there is an argument in pop. Yeah, so you can set an index, you can set an index to zero, it's gonna pop from the other side. But I kind of like this thing a bit better, right? So it's, I don't know. It's very uh, declarative, so to speak. Right. So here's the program, uh, here is a subcommand, and for the subcommand we expect file one and file two. Uh, right, so not print out, just print, come on. Uh, error. Um, so maybe also I forgot that I need to say something like error, no subcommand is provided. Right, no subcommand is provided. Uh, no files to compare were provided for subcommand. Subcommand. Right. So and the reason why I do that is because if I ever change the uh, name of the subcommand, I don't have to change it in here. So that's basically the idea. So then we have one. Uh, and after that, maybe I'm gonna do something like um, eh! file path one uh, args args file path two. And here we just do it uh, like this file path one uh, file path two. There we go. About that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? 
Uh -huh. So maybe it would make sense to like put this entire thing into completely separate, uh, separate function, right? So that would be interesting, I think. Um, so let's call it something like diff subcommand, and we're gonna accept args, uh, you know, as the uh, argument of the function, right? So that will allow us to like literally copy paste this entire thing uh, to here, right? Uh, and then call uh, diff subcommand on the args that we were parsing. Uh, so interestingly here, we can say something like print f... Uh, probably makes sense to actually use this one. So the, the, ge the general thing, uh, right? And then here we can say error uh, unknown subcommand subcommand. Exit with one. So there is a little bit of duplication with the printing like help. Uh, maybe we can factor it out, right? So we can put something like usage in here. So this is more of a general usage. Uh, right, so this is in the program. Uh, and then I can just move that stuff in here. Right. And then instead of repeating myself over and over again, I can do program uh, in here. Uh, usage program. Eh, problem. There we go. Cool. So maybe I also want to do something like this. Uh huh. So let's go also down. Aboba. That's a that's a lot of code already. So it's already a serious project. It's more than one hundred lines of code. That's a serious project. 100 lines of code. Insane. It's like almost unmaintainable. Almost unmaintainable, tell me. Uh, all right, so let me see. Does it still work, by the way? Can I still do that? Okay, so it already complains. Unknown subcommand file uh, one. This is perfect, actually. By the way, since we have subcommands, we can implement the Levenstein algorithm to suggest the closest subcommand if you made a typo. Yo, that's like perfect application, right? So we, we implemented the same algorithm, but twice, right? First for the lines, and then maybe we can even use the same algorithm. Maybe we can factor out the entire process and just use the same function for both comparing the files and comparing the subcommands. That's such a cool application of this thing. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> because it's, it's a dynamic language, right? So you don't have to specify the type. So the, um, the loop in here, it literally doesn't give a shit whether it's comparing uh, characters or it's comparing lines. It literally doesn't know. It could be as generic as possible. It's actually super cool. Yo. Uh, okay, guy. Uh, so what do we have in here? So div sub command and yeah, I want you to put a diff in here uh, and it still works as you can see it actually computes the diff and stuff like that so uh, the thing that we need to implement in here is subcommand equal patch right so in here we can uh, we can even do a similar thing patch subcommand uh, args right so let's go ahead and implement this thing uh, the patch subcommand args uh, we're gonna assert false in here because it's not implemented yet not implemented uh, right, so let me think about that stuff, right? Let me think about that stuff. So uh, let's literally factor it out. So let's create Levenstein. Uh, I, I don't know how to spell his his name properly. I'm really sorry, Vladimir. Was he Vladimir Levenstein? I don't remember. Yeah, Vladimir Levenstein. Um, Volodya, прости. All right, so what we're gonna accept in here, we're gonna accept two sequences, right? So let's actually call them S1 and S2. Uh, so, uh, all right, so, and the algorithm that does all of that come, uh, like goes from here uh, to here, I suppose. And then we construct a patch, then we reverse the patch. And this is something that we're probably gonna uh, actually return. 
edit distance. I think you're right. Right. So I think I'm going to call it edit distance because in the future we may modify it to be a little bit faster. It doesn't say it has to be the specific Levenstein algorithm. Right. Edit distance. Right. So, because maybe in the future I'll try to implement the BFS with some sort of heuristic, right? So, uh, I do agree with that. Okay. So, let's go ahead and just query replace lines with just S. Uh, lines, S. Right, so S1, S2. Uh, yeah. And I think that's basically it. So, then we reverse the entire thing and then we return the patch. Uh, right, so here... We can remove this entire stuff. Uh huh. And what we do? Patch, edit, distance. Lines one, lines two. Boom. All right. So then I can try to run that. That works. So the next thing we can do, right? We need to have a list of the subcommands to, to implement this uh, idea, like in Git, right? So if in Git you do something like uh, add the d. Right, it will tell you, maybe you meant something like this. To implement that, we need a list of the subcommands and we need to organize the loop to compute what's the closest thing in there, right? Uh, what's the closest thing? So that means we need to have a global list of subcommands, right? Subcommands. So what we're going to have in here is probably a map that maps a name to, let's say, maybe a function, literally, right? So div... Uh, div subcommand. Is that how we do that? I think that's how we do that. And then uh, we're gonna have a patch uh, and the patch subcommand, right? And we have only two commands. Let's actually introduce help subcommand that prints uh, this specific usage, right? Uh, so, and once we have this subcommand, in fact, we can uh, just actually use this thing in here to generate this help. So that means that we probably want to have something like uh, run. Right, so this is going to be a run, uh, and then we're going to have a description, right? So some sort of a description that, ex uh, you know, explains what it is. Uh, so this is description. Uh, though it also, there is like some sort of a signature in here, would be also kind of, kind of useful. Um, signature, right? So essentially... Uh, file one, file two. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Is it useful? I, I think it's 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 actually kind of cool. Uh, right. So we have run. Um, maybe it would be nice to have this as a class, right? Because you can then have this as methods or something. But I don't know. I don't know because if you have a sub command. It would be kind of cool to have this method run, that you run, right? And then signature, which is just the thing, but uh, I'm gonna keep it as, uh, as hash tables, right? So as dictionaries, that's what they call them here. Uh, signature, and here we have a file, um, file patch, okay. and a description, description. Mm -hmm. So let's take a patch, the file, and uh, boom, boom, boom. All right, and then we're gonna have help uh, run, maybe help subcommand, right? Subcommand uh, signature. Um, it's probably not gonna have anything, right? So uh, help doesn't. It may accept commands potentially, actually. Uh, right, we can say that uh, subcommand. Right, so specific subcommand that you wanna that you wanna explore because why not? Right. So and it's gonna be optional. If you don't provide any subcommand, it's not gonna print anything. Um, signature, yeah. Description. Uh, print this help. Print this help. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, gun. Mm hmm. What else do we need? What else do we need? So we have subcommands. Uh, I really wish I could just run the compiler, and the compiler would tell me like all of the places where I have to make the changes. For example, like define function help subcommand, 
um, or something else. <laughs> but they don't have a compiler. It's so bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, so there's a patch subcommand. Let's introduce help subcommand. All right. So it's going to be args. Uh, sort false. Not implemented. I just just can't run uh, and hope this thing to tell me what I need to do. Interpreted languages, by the way, right? So if I have the hash table, if I have this hash table, something like full uh, bar. Uh, what the fuck has happened? I don't know what that was. Uh, I think it's CIA is trying to hack into my computer. Uh, right, so it has something like this. How can I iterate this shit if I want to have a key and value in access and just print both of these motherfuckers? Okay, um, let's put this as an X. Right. It only gives me the keys, so foo and hello. I think I have to do something like items. Yeah, boy, I remember that shit. Okay, so foo uh, name uh, subcommand name subcommand maybe i'm gonna call it sub cmd because it's a little bit shorter uh, so subcommands sub uh, items right like so and what we're doing here is just print f4 then name then uh, sub cmd um, signature but unfortunately it has to be man okay Signature, signature, and then uh, let's put it like this. Maybe one, two, three, right, and then sub cmd oh, description like so, and go. And what's cool now is that we can replace this stuff with this loop as well, right? We can do that too. Yesu, yesu, yesu. Hmm. Uh, we can do that too. So essentially, if um, mm, 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 subcommand and name, if name is equal to subcommand, what I can do, I can just do uh, sub cmd, sub cmd, run with an arguments. This is really, <laughs> I don't like how it looks like, but yeah. Uh, and after that, I can just say exit zero, right? And if we never find anything, we just say that this is an unknown subcommand. Uh, the thing I don't like, I don't really don't like that this is some sort of a, you know, yeah, I don't like that I can just do subcommand signature. I really don't like that. So what if we like introduce a class for the subcommands, uh, right? So what if we introduce? Oh yeah, I can actually do it uh, like that. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm th I'm thinking in, in in a style of C. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so I can do, but I mean I also need to check if the subcommand is in there. So that means I have to do if subcommand in sub cmd. Only then I want to do sub cmd uh, subcommand, right? And then just run this entire thing with args. Otherwise, uh, I want to do that thing right okay so something like this but maybe we can even invert that and just uh, say not yeah. okay so that should be fine so maybe i should introduce the class right so sub command class of the sub command and here we can do init uh, self uh, run signature description uh, description all right and then we can do self run run uh, signature uh, description is that how we do that I think I think that's how we do that um, so and then we can do sub command um, yeah that will require copying all of that stuff I wonder if we can just quickly transform this entire thing by saying okay sub command uh, sub command and then look we're gonna do it like this yeah boy is that going to work I think that is going to work yo I think that's super cool so let me try to do that here as well uh, sub command so like this 
and then we're gonna do it like that boom 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 equal 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 and here I also have to replace this thing like so I wonder if it's going to work I wonder I wonder maybe not uh, so because of that that enables me probably to do it like this I'm not a Python developer so I don't know but I hope the Python runtime is gonna tell me if I'm doing something wrong right so it's just like a little bit easier to read because there's less syntactical noise in terms of brackets and like strings and stuff like that you know what I mean right so it's kind of a little bit easier to read than, than that right um, so this is a sub command sub commands uh, right so if subcommand is not in subcommands, we do that. Then we do subcommands, uh, uh, subcommand. Then we just do run, and it feels like a little bit more natural, right? Uh, it feels a little bit more natural. Uh, you are so fast, uh, say PW Blue Sky in the chat. No, I'm not really fast. Like I don't know if this code works. That's the thing. Right, so I, I just type in something, but I never actually run that. So if I try to run that, this thing may not even work. Right, I'm typing fast but incorrectly. It's like Chat GPT. People just say, "Okay, write me to do app," and it like writes to the app so so fucking fast, so fucking fast. But does does it write the correct code though? That's a different question, right? So, uh, <laughs> um, it's a fast fail technique. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me see, uh, let me actually try to do that. It seems to be working, right? So if I do something like this, uh, it actually, it is actually in fact correct, surprisingly enough. Though it doesn't really uh, align the descriptions on the, on the same column. What, did, did they actually write this code correctly? So apparently I did. So <laughs> uh, apparently I did, that's actually pretty cool. Um, so what we can do, um, we can uh, try to figure out what's going to be the length of the uh, of the biggest string in here, right? Because look, we can iterate um, this thing like so, right? We're iterating this thing like so, and then we may take this part. We're taking this part, and we're computing the length of this entire thing right so we have all of the possible lengths of this stuff and then we want to compute the maximum between them maximum uh, right and that's basically going to be the width right the width for for that uh -huh. so which means i can just take this um I don't even know how to call that, so it's going to be probably something like command, uh, and then I can say the command is this, but with width, because I remember that the string uh, had some stuff with L width, um, but I can't find that, so can I have help for the string? So there was like width, uh, L just, right? So, so return left justified string of width. Uh, yeah, so this is what we need, uh, L just. So we want to do L just on that stuff. Uh -huh. uh, L just with this width, right? So that's basically what I want you to do. Uh, though we might also... Hmm. Yeah, I think I want to remove this padding for now, like so. And something didn't work, so it's not the maximum, I think it's max, right? So it's literally max, yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, so as you can see, it's aligned perfectly. Right, and it's gonna work uh, regardless of how long it is, so if this thing will become super long, it will still adjust everything on like on the same column. So that's pretty cool. Yusu, 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 kawaii freaking this. I wonder if I can just make it a little bit more, uh, you know, less weird in here, right? So it's a little bit repetitive, if you know what I mean. 
Um, right, maybe it would make sense to have some sort of a function, uh, right, that accepts the name and the signature and just forms it into that. But maybe that's fine, right? Maybe that's fine, right? Uh, cool, cool, cool. Um, so let's go ahead and maybe implement the help subcommand. If I uh, do the help, it says that it's not implemented yet, right? Uh, it is not implemented. So what we're gonna do, uh, if length of the args is equal to zero, uh, that means we just need to print the general uh, help for this thing. So this is gonna be usage program. And here is where it becomes a little bit interesting. So the commands may need the program, right? They may need the program. And in fact, uh, the subcommand div does use the program but it was never actually passed to this function anywhere. And you know why? Because it's a freaking Python that made program a global variable. <laughs> it's not... I mean, it, it doesn't break anything, sure, but it mean it can lead to very unexpected behaviors and shit. Um, I wonder if I actually had something like this if i had def main like so would that be a problem get them dynamic languages get them dynamic languages yeah and now it complains okay so well i mean it yeah right so if i try to do diff it still doesn't complain it still created the program as the global variable so is there like a local keyword in here or something? No, there is no such thing. That's, it's very interesting. So the, the variables just leak into the global scope, uh, right? Is that what they do? They just simply leak into the global scope, right? So here's the program, um, right? So it shouldn't happen. Yeah, I also think so, but it somehow happens. Uh, right. Oh, this is because I never actually used that thing. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. Uh, if it never reached that code, it never created a problem. Yes. So, and this is the advantage of statically typed programming languages, by the way, is that you can only notice the problem when the, your execution actually goes there, only when your execution actually tries to, uh, where is this thing, to, to actually go to this branch. But if you never went to this branch, it will never notice that problem. That's a cool thing about statically type languages that you never have to execute that branch to actually know that there is something wrong in here. So it kind of meta executes all of the possible control flows for you at compile time. Not actually executes, but meta executes. It just like goes through all of them like to check if everything's okay. Um, that there's a lot of people who do not realize this uh you know advantage of static type compiler languages they still think that it's kind of uh limiting their workflow for whatever reason um but of course i could use probably some static type checking for python here as well like my pi people mentioned something like pi right i never heard about pi right so this is another flavor of the month uh type checking Microsoft disgusting. Okay, so <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. Static type checker for Python. All right. So can I install it via pip? Uh, just a sec. Uh, pip install by right. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, two, two, two. Installing. That was fast. Uh, successfully installed node env. Uh, that's actually too fast. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe that it actually installed the thing. Um, the products from Microsoft has to be slow and bloated. Like, why was it so fast? I don't understand. Uh, do I have pi right? Okay, so if I do something like pif. Uh, okay, now we're talking, now it is slow. Hmm. It's doing something serious. It's doing the work. 
bulk request. Okay, what the fuck is it doing? What? What the fuck was it doing? It's... What? NPM. <laughs> I swear, mo modern software development, I swear to God. Well, I mean, at least it tells us where this shit, you know, hit the fan. Is it gonna install it every time I run this thing? Okay, it's not gonna install it every time I run this thing, but holy fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, there is no problem here. At least it found the problem. Uh, yeah, at least it found the problem. Uh, okay, so I think we need to update the signature of our commands to also accept the program, right? So the, I think they, sh they also should accept the program just in case. Uh, use, 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 use. So this is a program. Uh, program. Every road leads to NPM, somebody says in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm already. Hello, what's up? Uh, really glad to see you. Okay, so uh, we have to put program in here. There we go. All right. So can I run it from within my Emacs? Uh, pif. Wasn't Pif like a French cartoon character or something like that? I think I remember that. Uh, okay. So now eight to five. It doesn't have a sub command. Well, yeah, in this specific case, since uh, I cannot use the card of saying that if I modify the sub command name, now I have to do, don't have to do it here. But I don't know. I don't see a good way to to work around that. Mm -mm -mm. Alrighty. Cool. So I wonder where. It it, like it installed something with npm. Where did it install that? Um, the, where is the node modules? <laughs> uh, I didn't see node modules, so yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay, go. Uh, what I was doing. So we already have a program. We already have everything, and. Uh, so I forgot what I wanted to do, right, I forgot what I wanted to do, yeah, I wanted to do the help, right, so if length of args is equal to zero, right, what I want to do, I want to just print the usage uh, of program, right, and then just exit with uh, zero, zero code, right, then uh, if we provided the command, right, so subcommand, uh, args, args, uh, if we provided the subcommand, we check if the subcommand is in the subcommands. If uh, not in subcommands, so subcommand not in subcommands, um, we are going to probably say unknown subcommand. Right? So we can print this thing one more time, but we're going to say that it's an unknown subcommand. We're going to exit with um, zero execute. Though here I can just return, maybe. Eh, whatever, doesn't really matter. And then here, uh, what we have to do, we have to print the usage. Uh, usage. Then we have subcommand. Uh, then we have subcommands. Subcommand. Uh, signature. Signature. Uh, and then maybe we can print something like. <laughs> description. Maybe. Uh, this is not what I wanted, but uh, okay. So we get that. If I do help, it is that. If I do help, help, print this help. Uh, yeah. Then we can do diff. We we'll we get that patch. We get that. Then we get that. And everything works as expected. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, and the thing I wanted to do, right, if you got an unknown subcommand, an unknown subcommand situation, 
we want to try to use the added distance between the subcommand to find the closest one. Right. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so here we are not in subcommands. We're going to do something like this. So we're going to have a name and uh, <clears throat> the actual, you know, sub definition. Right? So I'm going to call it definition, name and definition in uh, subcommands uh, items. Right. And we literally going to use edit distance between the subcommand that the user provided and the name. Right. And uh, this gives us the patch. And we can take the length of this patch, and this is going to be the Levenstein distance, essentially. Uh, right, effectively. <clears throat> In fact, maybe we can use a little bit of the uh, generators. And we can basically give it as a tuple. Right, so for now, I just want to generate a tuple and see how it goes. Right, and... Uh, just see what's who's the closest one print this entire thing right so known uh, let's actually print it somewhere down there uh, right and let's do it like that so if I do something like diff but I forgot to put this thing so as you can see um, you need to make one change to diff um, to, you need to make one change to get div, you need to make eight, eight changes to get, to get patch, and you need to make seven changes to get help. That's actually a lot of changes, and this is probably because we don't have substitution, which is, I guess it's fine, right? Um, so what we can do in here, we can now sort these things by, uh, by the second value, right? So if I do something like patch, uh, right? Uh, as you can see here, patch is the closest one. It, it's kind of funny that we're literally using the same algorithm as we use for the div. That's what makes it cool. It's literally the same function. We're calling the same function. Uh, right. So, yes, yes, yes. So, so can we now sort uh, this entire stuff? So if I do uh, Python 3 help sort, right. So this is sorted in place, maybe it's sorted. Uh, so it's probably something like this. So it's a sort, yeah, sort in place. And key, uh, stable sort in place. What does a key mean though? Uh, Built-in list instance. Is there any more information in how this shit works? Uh, all right, so Python 3 built-in sort. Because I'm not sure um, how to use the key. Uh, okay, so it's a... Wikipedia sort. So it's sorted, but I want it in, in place. So key, is key a function? Key, item getter. So I suppose it is a function. Um, key functions. Uh, starting uh, sort the parameter specify the key function. Okay. Okay, okay, I see. All right, so this is probably what we can use. Uh, so... Let me see. Um, let me see. I want to assign this thing to something. Um, candidates. Right. So these are the candidates. Uh, candidates sort key. And this is the lambda where we get the X. And we're going to return uh, actually the second thing. So it's going to be X and 1. So that's the key. And let's print the candidates. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. So it always, uh, you know, sorts them. It puts the closest one to, to the beginning. Right. Uh, right. So now it is help. Right. So how are we going to be doing all that? Right. So uh, we can pick uh, top N or something. Right. Mm, 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 mm. Though we can do another thing, we can say, because for instance, if um, in case of git, uh, you have to make too many changes, it's probably not going to print anything, right? So there is some sort of a threshold of the changes, right? After a certain amount of changes, it doesn't really, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really print anything. So in our case, when you make a typo, you probably need to 
add a character, remove a character, or replace a character. And replacing a character is actually uh, two actions, remove and add. So we can say ignore like literally everything uh, that has this thing um, greater than two, right? So less than three, we're gonna say less than three. So here's the interesting thing. Is there any way for me to assign a value to it like some sort of a binding right so d and then d like this and then we use it uh, like this is there is there a way for me to do that uh is that a thing in the uh, in the list comprehension um right i'm not really sure mm -hmm. uh, the wall separator okay so let me just check it out python Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. list comprehension Walrus. Walrus. Inside list comprehension. Okay. Waylon Walker. I don't know who that is. Python. Uh, they came up. Uh, uh, mm, I have an old Python, by the way. Yeah. 3.7. So we have to, we have to do it like that. It is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Uh, is it not? I think it is. So though we can just like don't use least comprehension in this specific case, then. Uh, mm, um, okay. Interestingly, uh, is there any way to take a certain amount of things? Right, top ten. Maybe not, maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so if candidates, if we have some candidates, right, greater than zero, uh, we can say something, uh, you, maybe, maybe you meant, uh, uh huh, and four, uh, name, and we don't care about the distance in candidates, we're going to print one, two, three, for uh, name only when we have them right yeah unknown com sub command hell maybe you meant help right so and if i provide too many of these things it doesn't print that only when i make a typo like dev right maybe you meant div mm -hmm. isn't that pog so now we can literally tell the user <clears throat> like what kind of command they probably meant uh, right and we literally using the same algorithm that we use to compare the files right so there we go so we compare the files we implemented our own diff with our own format and it's literally the same function uh, edit distance right so we just compute edit distance and there we go uh, yes, yes, yes. It's just like in case of these subcommands, we take the patch and we only take the length of the patch, right? We pick the subcommand with the smallest patch. <clears throat> Reusable code. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's actually pretty poggers, my dudes. Super poggers. So what did we do? Um... <clears throat> Um, that's a lot of code, actually. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, so let me let me do a committee committee and maybe even push a push. Introduce sub commands. Right, I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Uh, so the source code is available, right? So publicly, I'm gonna copy paste it in the chat for anyone who's interested. Uh, there we go. So it's a simple file diff two in Python. Okay. So let's actually try to implement the patch application, right? So patch uh, subcommand, uh, right? So what do we have in here, right? So in if we take a look at the readme, so patch also accepts two parameters in here, right? It also accepts two parameters. Uh, if length args is less than um, two, right? We can do something like uh, we need to print the usage, and I suppose the usage is going to be very similar in here. Uh, where is the diff? Yeah. Oh, this is very interesting. This is the signature. And we can probably... Uh, 
It would have been kind of cool. Would have been kind of cool if we had an access to self. But that kind of means that I have to go into this OP inheritance business where I have the abstract class subcommand and the subclasses diff subcommands. When in reality, I don't give a shit about them. I just want the uh, reference to the original thing in there. You know what I mean? It's just like, it would be kind of cool if I could just do that. But can I do that? I'm actually not sure. Uh, and not in daily block. Has anybody thought about that? Huh. Because run in a subcommand class is not a method. It is not a method. It's actually passed. That is so interesting. That is so interesting. So has anyone actually done that? Uh, let me try. I'm, I'm actually really curious. Um, so if I have class foo, right, if I have class foo, and I have a, a constructor, self, uh, and here I accept some sort of um, value, x, and a method, run, let's call it run. And then I just like assign it internally, self x equal x, and then uh, run equal run, right. So, and then I have something like this, like foo, where I have self, literally self, why not? Uh, and then in here, I can do um, uh, hello from foo, and then I can, I want to print the self x, right? So then uh, I construct bar, which is a foo, um, 69 foo. And then I do bar run. What's going to happen? Is that something that will work in Python? That is very freaking interesting. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know Python. I'm not a Python programmer. Uh, and uh, missing one required positional argument. But it's not. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of funny. Um hmm. There's a little bit of a magic uh, going on with binding instance method. Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Uh, I can definitely see that. Hmm. So it has to be born to the class and stuff like that. I don't get them OP. Get them OP. Uh, it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Uh, right. Um, so in this case, I could probably wanna like I wanna, I wanna have some comments. That's what I wanna have. But it doesn't allow me to do that. Um, uh, all right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna figure it out a little bit later, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, okay, if then args less than two, we're gonna do print uh, usage program, right? So this is gonna be program, then uh, patch, uh, and in the original thing in here, if we go to the usage. Um, Right, it's not really usage, right, so it's going to be file, uh, file patch, and in here we can say not enough, um, yeah, error. not enough um, arguments were provided to patch a file, right, so actually we need to word the error message here as well, similarly not enough files were provided to comp uh, yeah. Wait to compare to compare files not enough to um, generate a diff okay let's, let's go like that um all right so then the first is the file path right so the, the regular file path so this is going to be arcs 
uh, args and then we have a patch path uh, okay so then we get the lines right so we have read entire file from file path and then split lines and there you go so and then we probably want to read entire patch file as well uh, split by lines right but here it's a little bit more interesting because uh, we want to parse each an individual line as a action as a patch action right so it's gonna be really interesting so maybe we can iterate this entire stuff by line um and then we can say line as patch action uh, all right so we can have a separate function specifically for that right def line as patch action mm -hmm. Uh, so then we got what we got the line right and in here so the line is essentially what uh, the line is essentially what um, I mean the, the yeah the patch so let's do assert false uh, not implemented uh, I want to do the comparison right and diff requires more arguments in here uh, is that because I didn't remove self from here? Yeah, I didn't remove the self. Okay, so this is that, and let's do file uh, patch. Okay, so if we look at file patch, so here is my patch. So a single action uh, is basically a character, A or R, then a number, right, then a number, and then the line itself, right? So we're either adding this line, uh, at this specific number, right? At this specific uh, line number, rather. Uh, and this is the value that we have to add. And this is the thing that we have to uh, remove, right? From the original one. Um, okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, then. So the easiest thing would be to probably use the regular expressions, but I don't want to do that. Uh, but maybe we could do that. So line as. So what would the what would be the regular expression for this kind of stuff, right? We would have something like uh, a or r, then space, then we would have a bunch of numbers. Maybe it's like more of like d. Uh, plus, right, all of that has to be captured in my opinion, right, so all of that has to be captured, and then uh, we have the rest of this stuff. So, uh, can we have some regexer? Um, regex 101, let's actually do regex 101. Uh, two, 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 so we're gonna put this thing in here, and then I'm gonna take the patch, and uh, let me see. And it matches it perfectly, so as you can see. Uh, I wish I could see what's in here. Yeah, as you can see, we actually... Can I, uh, like, pop out match information so somehow? Expert matches. There we go. So, as you can see, we managed to patch. But this is actually pretty cool. Right, so with this website... Oh, okay. You, you can basically have some data and some regular expressions, and then you can export the, the, match, and the match stuff. Okay, plain text as well so as you can see we managed to like with this regular expression we can actually parse this entire stuff yeah. okay but i don't remember how to use regular expressions in in python so <laughs> we'll have to google that python uh regexp uh, example exmaple exmaple regular expression how to uh to 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 oh my so much text oh my god just show me an example holy fuck i, I know what is regular expression okay so this is what we want uh, compile ignore case uh, yeah yeah that's what i meant okay um import yeah and we have that line as line s it's actually not pronounced like s as uh, right, so we compile this, though we can actually make it like a global, right? So we can say that this is a patch line rejects and we just can compile it once and use it all the time. 
And then we want to match this entire thing. But I also want to match groups, right? So if you know what I mean. Uh, right, so let's do uh, patch line rejects uh, group. Right, return the string matched uh, by the regular expression. So I suppose we have to do match um, the line and then we get the match in here, right? So that's the match. And then we can try to return that match. So I wonder if I can just like literally uh, return that thing. Uh, if I can literally return that thing. So here what I want to do, I want to just print uh, the, the patch that we managed to get, hopefully. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so let me, let me see. So we generated this thing. So now I want to do patch, file, and then file patch. Right, so what it will do. Uh, we've got some matches, as you can see. So how many matches do we get? Uh, quite a few, I suppose. Um, and uh, if we couldn't match something, what it will return in that specific case? So if I do something like this, um, right. Yeah. Right. Does it return something like none? Okay, it does return none in case of not being able to find this thing. Um, okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, it would be actually nice to tell where you have this kind of error. So maybe instead of doing that, uh, I'm going to just do something like this uh, for yeah, Emacs. I, I swear to God, Emacs. Okay, so here's the line. We split lines. As far as I know, we can enumerate. So then later, um, but is this how enumerate works? Right, enumerate. You probably get um, something like this. Right, you, you you have to do like that, okay. Because enumerate as a method, I think it's a thing in, in Rust specifically. Right, it's a thing in Rust. Um, right, and if I turn it into a list, uh, right, so maybe I'm going to start from 20 up until 100, and if I enumerate, the first one is the index, right, so this is i uh, line, right, and the way we're going to do, uh, do all of that, we're going to do patch uh, line rejects, match the line, and if m is none, we're going to print the error, uh, we're going to print the error, this is going to be uh, we need to print the patch file path, patch path, then the i, I, I think I want to call it row, so this is going to row, and then um, we can say unknown um, invalid patch action, right, uh, invalid patch action, so after that we can try to ignore that, uh, right, uh, if, mm -hmm. We can say the following thing, continue. We're gonna simply ignore that. Uh, and then if it is correct, we can try to add that to the patch in here. So it's gonna be append. Uh, and how do we extract the groups? Right, so this is the groups. Uh, but then um, there is a method group. But I wanna take this specific match. Oh, this is just a, such a pain to read. Okay, um, a regular expression, capture group. It's just like painful. Like nobody has time to do any, to to read all of that. Like come on, um, it's just pain. Um, examples. I need examples, dude, dude, dude. Okay, group one, group two. That's what I wanted. My God, why was it so hard to just give me that? Okay, um, M group one, M group two. But this one is actually an integer, right? Uh, an integer. And then we have M group. Three. There we go. Uh, so here's an interesting thing. Um, I still, if any of these things failed, uh, I want to exit with one. Uh, right. So if not OK, return uh, exit one. So the idea is the following. We're going to iterate through all of the lines. Right, we're gonna iterate through all of the lines, and if we encounter incorrect lines, we're gonna print all of them. We're gonna print all of them. And if one was incorrect, right, if one was incorrect, we're gonna exit with one and we're not gonna try to do anything. So essentially, we're gonna give you the full list of uh, all of the lines that you have to fix, right? So that's gonna be the idea. Um, mm -mm. All right. 
So, what do we get? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So now we can just try to run it. Yeah, as you can see, invalid patch action. And it's actually printed it in... Well, I mean, it's just Emacs being Emacs. Emacs expects, uh, you know, lines starting from one for whatever reason. Like so, yeah. So, and if we have a couple of incorrect lines, uh, another thing would be that uh, we have th the action that is not supported, right? So, as you can see, uh -huh, there we go. So, we can probably want to, we can also print the specific line. I think that would make sense. Yeah, so we'll give it a try. There we go. Invalid patch action, this, this, and this. That's pretty cool. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then if we do that, uh, invalid patch action, empty line. Huh, that's very interesting. So maybe we should uh, ignore empty lines, right? So if I have something like... Um, mm -hmm. What do I need? All right, so can I trim this shit? Can I do trim? Uh, strip? Yeah, it's called strip. All right. Uh, but is it in line? I don't remember. Is it in line? Strip, strip. Return copy. It's a copy. Okay. Um, stripped line. Maybe I can map this entire shit. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, actually, it's actually kind of dangerous. Because the lines that you're updating may contain spaces. Right? So here's the thing. Look, look, look. So you may uh, have spaces in here, and this could be intentional, it could be part of the patch. So we can't easily do that. Um, <clears throat> though, if the line is literally empty, uh, we can simply continue, because why not? Because you can have like a new line at the end, um, and that should be a valid thing, I think. Um... There we go. Uh, so what we can do, uh, not implement it. Okay, so now I'm going to do the following thing. I'm going to do the following thing, it's going to be the patch. Uh, all right, so, and yeah, this, this is literally the patch and it's literally the same data as uh, we got um, generated from um, when we did the div sub comment. Uh, do you guys still have motivation to learn something new while ChatGPT exists? I have a similar question for you. Uh, do you still have motivation to speak when TTS exists? I don't. After they invented TTS, I think all of the speakers, they went out of the job. So yeah, there's literally no motivation to speak anymore. It's just like, I mean, computers do that better than, than me. I mean, why? Why speak? <laughs> uh, speaking is overrated, exactly. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, we've got the patch. Uh, we've got the patch. Now we need to freaking apply that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Let's actually freaking apply the patch. Uh, so, we're gonna have an action. Well, though, we can actually separate like so action. Uh, then, line, the line at which we have to perform the action, right? It's actually, let's call it row, right? So, it's more of a row. <clears throat> because in here we refer to row, and that's a number, right? And then here we have the line that we have to either add or remove, right? It depends on what we're doing here. So, this is the patch. And then, <clears throat> what do I do? What do I do? So I can do something like switch. Oh, there is a switch key this now, but I don't care. I'm using old Emacs, old, old Python, not Emacs. So we have an action which is either add, uh, right, assert, false, not implemented, right, or uh, action remove, right, so this is not implemented, and else uh, assert, false, and this is unreachable. And this is actually truly unreachable, right? So essentially, you even even if you put incorrect action in here, it's going to fail uh, at this stage. So it's gonna exit earlier before you can even hit, uh, have something here. So if you reach this thing, that means there is a bug in here somewhere, and that's what why it's unreachable. So it should be like literally assert. Uh, 
so. Mm-mm. Okay, so we have um, add. Do we have like an insert thing uh, in lists? All right, so can I do help on list? Insert. I can insert thing at an index, but I wonder if it's going to work correctly. Can I just like literally uh, do the following thing? Uh, lines, right, so I have the file that I'm trying to patch, right, and I say insert um, row line. Is that going to be literally it? I wonder. <laughs> I actually wonder. Uh, then if I want to remove, uh, remove first occurrence of value, well, I mean, yeah, remove a return item at index. Okay. So is it going to be as simple as pop row, though? That's also an interesting question. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's find out. So um, now we can print the, the lines that we got. Uh, so let's, let me actually to iterate through all of the lines and then just print the other line. Let's see how it goes. Uh, yes, yeah, so that could be it, actually, believe it or not. Um, okay. And I think that does not work correctly. Uh, right. That doesn't work correctly because... So, if we take a look at the file patch, we're supposed to also insert this thing. Uh, but it didn't do shit. Right. That definitely didn't do shit. So let me try to... I feel like there's something wrong with the remove, uh, right? Because it feels like it's like adding those things and then it's removing them. Uh, right, so this is going to be pass. Uh -huh. So it's adding shit at very interesting place. I'm not quite... Okay, <clears throat> this is very interesting. So effectively, as we add things, we also need to update the previous lines and stuff like that. So maybe we have to actually apply that shit in a reversed order. Right. So maybe that will make more sense. Uh-huh. So, okay. So if I take a look at the file, uh, file patch. Though I didn't... <clears throat> Um, didn't enable this thing. Okay, it seems to be working. Right, is that the same as a file too? Is that the same as a file too? I think it is. No, it is not. Well, I mean, it kind of is. Yeah, so, okay, this... This line that you're supposed to replace is... Yeah. I think it's the same. Yeah, boy, boy, I think it works if we apply that in a in reverse order. Yeah. So what's funny is that before saving the patch, right, when we generate the patch, we reverse it. That's very interesting. But then when we apply it, we reverse it again, which raises the question, do we really need to reverse this Matafalipa? Do we really need to reverse it? If we apply it in the reverse order anyway, maybe we don't need to reverse it. But I mean, uh, what if somebody intentionally gonna create a patch that is uh, in the wrong order? We would have to first um, sort those things accordingly. We'd have to sort this thing accordingly. But I suppose it's gonna be left as a homework because I already stream more than two hours, but you get the idea, right? So. Yeah, essentially we basically created that thing. So the last thing that we can do, we can try to save that uh, in the original file. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's actually go ahead and do that. I think that's gonna be like a basically wrap up. So it's, the implementation is not full, but you, you get the idea. Uh, right, so we're gonna open uh, like with, uh, with open um, file path, right? So we're opening the file path for specifically writing as uh, f as 
and uh, what I want to do, um, I want to iterate through these lines, and I want to write that line there, but I don't remember. So help open uh, readme md or something like that. So uh, write. Is it possible to write lines? So um, write lines. Ooh, that's cool actually. Write the lines. Uh huh. So we can provide the lines, and I suppose it does the thing that you want to do. Okay, F write lines, and we can just do the lines. Okay. Uh, okay, go. So the reason, the thing I want to do now, right? Actually, um, I want to remove some of this stuff. Right. So here is the stuff. Uh, I want to open the readme and I want to follow the readme. So um, the first thing I want to do is to verify that file one and file two are two different files. As you can see, they are in fact two different files. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to generate a patch out of them. So there's something wrong in here with um, open as f. There we go. So that generated a patch, file patch, here is the patch. So the second thing from readme that we have, we apply that patch. Did that modify the file one? Yeah, it did, it, it did in fact modify the file one. And as you can see, it fucked up completely. So, okay. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just iterate the lines. Line in lines. Uh, and I'm gonna write a single thing in here. Uh, and maybe even write a new line. And that's it. So, yeah. Uh, let's try to generate patch one more time and let's try to apply that um, thing. So I need to revert the file one. Yeah. So let's apply the patch. Uh, write must be a string, uh, not list, single. Okay, so uh, pop from empty. It was trying to pop from empty thingy. Uh-huh. Okay, this is because it didn't... Uh, okay, one more time. So this one should work now. If we take a look at this thing, uh, it did a bunch of modifications and I think it fucked up miserably, actually. <laughs> right, so if we try to take a look at the div between them, yeah, it is something fucked up completely. Right, um, okay. So it is reversed. Did I remove the reverse thingy? No, I didn't. So something is completely wrong. Mm -hmm. So this thing is reversed, which is correct. Um, then I do reverse. So that doesn't really fix the problem, doesn't it? Uh -huh. So it duplicated a bunch of lines, though. Um, Duplicated a bunch of lines, so I'm not really sure how to fix that. Uh, so let me see, let me see. Maybe it's something wrong with the patch. Oh, it's just okay. So this triggered a cascade reaction of different errors, right? So a bug in a thing fucked up the file. Then I did a diff of a fucked up file, got fucked up patch. Then I fixed the bug and I was trying to apply the fucked up patch. And that... <laughs> Fucking classic, doesn't it? And it's like, it's not like I have a bug. It's just like things, it's like, a, I don't know, it's like an avalanche of like fucking up shit, right? So the, the, the usual thing in software development that happens. Uh, right, <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, it's never a single problem, it's all the problems. So yeah, it's just like, uh, God damn it. So I should I should probably start over. And the reason why it became an avalanche is because I didn't want to start over, right? I didn't want to start over and just, I, I should have started over, right? Okay, let's take a look at the div of these two files, file one and file two txt, one more time. Okay, so that's a, that's a reasonable div. That's a reasonable div. Let's do, let's take the patch. So if you take a look at the patch, patch is fine. Patch is fine. Cool. So then we're going to try to apply the patch. 
uh, through our apply patch procedure and hopefully that actually apply the patch as you can see it applied the patch and then we want to verify that the files are now in fact the same they are the same we verified the readme everything's correct there was no bug it's just i had a fucked up patch from a previous bug that i fixed so that's how it works welcome to software development all right so uh i don't have to do that and i don't have to do that um, so essentially, I'm going to do a committee committee and then uh, pushy pushy implement uh, patch sub command. Uh, I'm going to push that right into the repo. You can find the source code of this shit in here if you are, of course, interested. If you're not, just don't go there. I mean, uh, so that's pretty cool. So I really liked this mini project on two streams because it finally demystified diff utility for me in fact i've been using git from i think since 2008 or 9 right because i've been on github since the beginning and i learned git like short like shortly before uh, github was even released at all and i've been using it for for quite some time so it was my main like uh, version control system and the diff algorithm and diff approach was always a mystery for me it's just like how how do you even approach doing that it's just like what the fuck are you doing and uh now it finally demystified for me now i know of course this specific implementation is square right so it's quadratic uh and it's uh, you know less efficient than whatever you have in an actual uh, unix diff utility but it's the approach that matters right now i know the approach now i understand this uh, you know, edit graphs and stuff like that. And we can, if we want to, implement some sort of heuristic to make it faster. So as far as I know, the main algorithm that is used in the Unix diff utility is the Mears algorithm. I don't remember how uh, their name is pronounced. Mears uh, algorithm, algorithm, right. Uh, so yeah, there we go. So there's a very cool blog post in here, uh, which visualizes the algorithm. And as you can see here, we have the editing graphs and essentially it visualizes like the, uh, BFS, um, heuristic that sort of like drives towards the, uh, the corner in here, as you can see in here. So the problem with this uh, article is that the source and destination is swapped from my convention, but the idea is basically the same. So if you want to read more about that, I recommend this thing It's it's just a visualization, All right? So they also refer to the original paper. Uh, so if you want to, you know, learn more about how exactly it works, maybe you want to read the original paper. Uh, right. So, and I'm also going to put that thing in the description for anyone who's interested. Uh, right. So, there we go. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, does anyone have any questions before I go? Yusu, 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 kawaii freaking desu. Or I mean, maybe like if you have any questions, you can just ask ChatGPT. So maybe I should stop asking for questions. If you have any questions, just ask, uh, ask ChatGPT. <laughs> so the only point to watch the stream is to learn uh, things to ask to ChatGPT, right? Uh, the stream was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for watching. It was actually very interesting for me as well. Um, in your patch implementation does remove even have to have content of web probably not but uh i initially wanted to verify uh that we're removing correct line but we don't have time anymore so <laughs> mm. why did you pick red shirt because this is the only shirt the, the only clean shirt i have right now everything else is <laughs> It's dirty. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, how can one provide so much content for free? Guess I'm a loser. I suppose. Uh, a Chad successful entrepreneur would never give this sh uh, shit for free to anyone. But unfortunately, I'm just a virgin loser. So that's why I just do what I enjoy and I give it away for free. I don't know. 
maybe whatever I'm doing right now is going to improve the large language model in the future. Maybe. It's actually very interesting. This is a, this is a very deep, interesting philosophical thought. Uh, writing like articles, books, making streams is a way to become immortal because your work may eventually become part of artificial intelligence, part of the large language model, and thus your part of your brain will become immortal forever as part of that AI. So cool. Such an interesting thought, actually. Wow. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's it for today. Thanks to everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreational programming session. Love you. <laughs>